This is Jack Johnson. From Stanford University, majoring in business management, he enjoys community service, coaching children's sports, and volunteering. Jack is 26 years of age and a Native American, born and raised. His hobbies include Sudoku, hanging with friends, and swimming. Now, here we have Exotico Chun from Indonesia who attended King's College majoring in business management. He's a perfectionist who enjoys volunteering, community service, and photography. Exotico is 25 years of age and is very exotic. His hobbies include crossword puzzles, hanging with pals, and golfing. These two educated young men are applying for the same job, but one is destined to get the job over the other, based on the names on the application. Though their education and hobbies are similar, people have a tendency to pick a person more similar to themselves based on a subconscious bias. For decades, the status of women in the workplace have been debated everywhere from the boardroom to the courtroom. Gender discrimination has always been a big problem in the workplace. We have two people who are extremely similar both upper-class educated young male and young female. Graduates from Yale University, both majoring in finance and marketing, searching for a job at Wall Street. The differences they have would be extracurricular activities and gender. Gender discrimination is a situation that women and men are not equal. Gender inequality refers to unequal treatment or perceptions of individuals wholly or partly due to their gender. John Smith is an experienced employee of the company. He is 55 years old. He is not as energetic as he used to be, but is still very consistent, results-oriented, and manageable with his work. Adam Pierce is a fairly new employee to the company. He is 28 years old, fresh out of an MBA program, and is very energetic. He is not very consistent at his work, but is still really charismatic. Due to some cost-cutting issues, the company decided to let go of some personnel. When it comes down to choosing between John and Adam, the company decided to fire poor John as they were biased towards keeping younger personnel. Why do they do this? Due to several reasons. Younger workers tend to have more energy than older workers. They are more tech-savvy as millennials. And they'll work for the next 30 years when baby boomers will most likely be leaving the world. Unconscious biases have a critical and problematic effect on our judgment, says Francesca Gino, professor at Harvard University. They cause us to make decisions in favor of one person or group to the detriment of others. In the workplace, this can prevent diversity, hinder recruitment of employees, cause bias promotion, and retention efforts. Managers have to learn to de-bias their practices and procedures. Here are some strategies. Number one, go blind for the resume review, meaning take away the gender from a resume and the names from a resume. Replace the names with an application number. You need to look at what each person brings to the table. Again, software programs that blind the process for you are useful, says Gino. A blind systematic process for reviewing applications and resumes will help you improve your chances of including the most relevant candidates in your interview pool including uncovering some hidden gems. It is easy for bias to trickle in when such a process is not decided a priority. Number two, standardized interviews. Structured interviews whereby each candidate is asked the same set of defined questions. Standardize the interview process and minimize biases by allowing employers to focus on the factors that have a direct impact on performance. Bonet suggests using an interview scorecard that grades candidates' responses to each question on a predetermined scale. Ideally, interviewers don't know the specifics about how well each candidate did in terms of the CV review and work sample, she adds. The goal is for the interview to become a third independent data point. Last, but certainly not least, seek to understand. F. Gino recommends managers to look into providing workers with education and training on the topic. Awareness training is the first step on unraveling unconscious bias because it allows employees to recognize that everyone poses them and to identify their own. The idea is to create an organizational conversation about biases.
stand up. Yeah, now stand yeah, up. Yeah, stand up. Yeah, stand up. Yeah, stand up. All right, I'll see you then. You're too big. Ooh. Let's throw him in there. You guys have a minute. Yeah, take a selfie with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A cup. We need a cup. Just do this. Where'd you get food? I have no idea. No, it's okay. I got it. Why don't you do that one? How are you doing that? What's that? What's that? Oh, I forgot that. Prince, 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 do me a favor and shake Max's hand. And then everybody get up and leave. <laughs> yes! Yeah, we're having a review session right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Delicious, yeah. Why? Do I even matter? No, like, yeah, yeah, yeah.